Namaskar and good evening to all. A warm welcome to you all on fourth day of ICR National Institute of Agriculture Economics and Policy Research webinar series on quantitative methods for social sciences. As you know, every donor seeks the result or output and impact of their funding, be it in research or developmental work. For that purpose, social scientists needs to abreast with the latest methodology in impact assessment and various principles of impact evaluation. Therefore, next four days, we will focus on various methods of impact assessment like propensity score matching, DID, IV, and economic surplus approach. Today, we will start with basics and principles of impact assessment and our main topic of propensity score matching. Now, I request Dr. Abhimanyu to introduce the speaker. Thank you, Dr. Vinayak Nikam, for introducing the topic. Good evening to all. For today's lecture, we have with us Mr. Aditya K.S. He is an agricultural economist working as a scientist in the Division of Agricultural Economics at Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi. His major research area is policy impact assessment. Now I request Mr. Aditya to start his lecture. Uh. Good evening to everybody. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Yes, yes. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, thank you, Vinayak, sir, for um, introducing the topic. Uh, you made my job easy. And thank you, Abhimanyu, sir, for introducing. Um, as Vinayak sir uh, spoke about, today's topic is about impact assessment methodologies. And particularly, uh, I will be starting with principles of impact assessment, then I will be moving to propensity score matching methods for estimating impact. Before I start uh, with the actual topic, let me give a brief overview of what to expect in the session, okay? Uh, so I will be starting with principles of impact assessment. So here, uh, my main emphasis will be to emphasize why we need a separate set of methods for doing impact analysis. We already have so many set of methods in econometrics. Why can't we use the other methods for impact assessment as well? Why do you need a separate set of methods? That is my first objective. Once I establish that you need separate methods for impact assessment, I will be talking about logic behind matching methods. So matching methods is a broad category within which propensity score matching method is one. But here, my focus will be on answering the question why rather than how. So I will be talking about what is the logic behind matching? Why do we match and what problem it solves rather than how to match it? That I will come at the end of my session. Next, I will be talking about propensity score matching method. Here also, I'll be talking about the assumptions first. Then I will be talking about the steps involved in propensity score matching and uh, rational behind each of those steps and few recommendations if you want to implement propensity score matching. And at the end of the session, I will be demonstrating the propensity, propensity score matching with the help of Stata software. And uh, we, we will be finishing our session with a few question and answers as usual. So let's uh, get started. Let me start the session uh, by uh, introducing you to few terminologies, which I will be frequently using uh, during this one and a half hours. So first of that is treated. Whenever I use the word treated, it means a group of farmers or people or household for that matter who adopted a particular technology or who benefited from the program. Treated is a gen generic terminology. And if I am talking about impact assessment of adoption of agriculture technology, then treated group is nothing but the adopter group. So synonym for treated is beneficiary, participants, adopters. All these three terms are synonyms. Okay, please keep this in mind. Treated is nothing but beneficiary, participant, or adopter. 
whenever you do impact assessment impact assessment is always by comparing the beneficiaries with non beneficiaries or adopters with non adopters so you need a comparison group for doing impact assessment and i call that comparison group as control so control is nothing but group of units or farmers people who did not benefit from the technology and the synonyms for it is non beneficiary non participants or non adopter third thing which is uh, crucial as well is outcome variable whenever i say uh, i am doing impact assessment then the immediate question should be impact on what so for example you are talking about the impact assessment of adoption of a high yielding variety so the variety is high yielding the intervention or the technology that you are talking about is a high yielding variety then appropriate outcome variable should be yield or it should be income suppose i am talking about adoption of bt cotton and its impact the immediate outcome of bt cotton is reduction in the pest population because of that the cost will reduce so one outcome variable will be cost subsequently the second outcome could be income so outcome variable is nothing but the final variable on which you want to measure the impact so i will be using this term very often so keep this in mind next is intervention so similarly whenever i say impact so impact of which program you are interested in or which technology you are talking about is it a variety is it a technology that is what i am talking about intervention intervention could also be a program even a poverty alleviation program can be a intervention next term is covariates so whenever you run a model for example uh, outcome as a function of all other relevant independent variable so together all the independent variables i am terming as covariates so whenever in the future course of the session if i say covariate you should understand that this is the set of independent variables in the model then we have two sets of equations one is called outcome equation another one is called selection equation so the difference between outcome equation and selection equation lies in the dependent variable whenever you model variable as a function of all other covariates it becomes a outcome equation whenever you model adoption itself so here the dependent variable becomes adoption or who is the adopter of a technology and who is not when that becomes your dependent variable then it becomes your selection equation so let me repeat outcome equation dependent variable is outcome variable selection equation your dependent variable is a dummy variable which indicates who is the participant or who is the adopter right so let me start with theory of causal analysis okay so all the methods of impact assessment that you talk about be it difference in difference be it propensity score matching uh, be it regression discontinuity all these methods have their roots in theory of causal analysis please note no please note the spelling it is causal analysis not casual analysis there is a uh, difference between the two so in this causal analysis so this forms the basis for all your impact assessment methods so let us start our discussion right from theory of causal analysis okay so what what is this theory of causal analysis is then so it is concerned with establishing the causation what do you mean by establishing the causation there will be a cause and there will be a effect if you say this is causing the effect then that is establishing the causation and more importantly the magnitude of the effect which is caused by the cause you are talking about for example if x variable is the cause and y variable is the effect x has moved from x1 to x2 and because of that y has moved from y1 to y2 then it becomes causal inference so you should establish first that x is causing y second thing the difference between the new value of y and the old value of y that is y2 minus y1 is caused by change in x let us translate that to a agricultural example suppose you are talking about adoption so here causal analysis say because of the adoption of a high yielding variety the income has increased by y1 to y2 
So if you can say because of adoption of variety only the yield has increased or income has increased, that is establishing the causation. Because of adoption only, five thousand rupees income has increased, that becomes the magnitude. Okay. So now in this theory of causal analysis, impact is defined in a certain way. Before telling you what is impact, let me go the other way around. Let me tell you what is not impact assessment from the perspective of causal analysis. Okay. So I am strictly referring here. from the theory of causal analysis why we cannot use the word impact i am not saying all the things that i am talking about is a wrong thing to do they are absolutely right they provide uh, some insights in their own way but they are not actually impact assessment from the theory of causal analysis first one is counting how many adopters are there in a technology and doing correlates of adoption which means uh the small farmers are not adopting a technology large farmers are adopting a technology these things that is not impact assessment second is you take the data from say 100 adopters of a high yielding variety and 100 non adopters of a variety or say 100 farmers who are growing a check variety then you simply take the difference in mean value across adopters and non adopters and claim it as impact that is wrong because Ah, let me not tell you why that is not impact. You will understand that in the due course of the session. Second is another thing that is commonly uh, people do is before the program is being implemented, uh, the income in the treated group is say five thousand rupees. Now the income is ten thousand rupees. So because of the program, the income increased by five thousand rupees. If you say it is impact, then I have an objection that is not impact. Okay, I agree that five thousand rupees income increase between the treated and controlled, but I have an objection that you cannot say that that increase is only due to your program that you are talking about and not anything else. And the last last one is the most common thing that we do, that is uh, working out costs and returns. That's like uh, you can say a partial budgeting analysis. That is also not enough. then you will be curious to know then what the hell is this impact assessment so let me define impact first okay so impact is nothing but you compare the units which receive the treatment to what would have happened in the absence of the treatment okay so register this definition in your mind so this is what will happen in the absence of the treatment compared to what is happening with the presence of the treatment let me translate the same thing into a equation e economists love equations so impact is equals to expected value of yi1 minus expected value of yi0 so don't worry about this expectation in a broad sense you can take expectation is nothing but conditional mean value or you can simply take it as average value so what is this y y is nothing but your outcome variable for simplicity let me take it as income okay so what is this i stands for i stands for individual and what is this 1 and 0 stands for 1 is the value if the person receives the treatment or adopts the technology and 0 is if he doesn't adopt the technology now let us translate this equation back to the statement okay so this is nothing but the value of income a person would derive if he has adopted the technology minus expected value of the income that he derive if he did not adopt the technology both at a same point of time that is called impact okay register this definition this is the income if he has adopted the technology minus the average value of income if he has not adopted the technology okay understanding the definition of impact is crucial for all our future discussion so for that matter let me go across to a hypothetical oversimplified case it's a hypothetical case okay let us start with a research question the research question that we have is what is the impact of econometrics coaching class on knowledge scores this is you want to study now there is a one year coaching class on econometrics you want to see what is the impact on the knowledge scores so what is the research design we follow here let us uh, for the sake of simplicity assume that 
with and without design we are following here with and without means one person gets the treatment other doesn't get then we compare assume you have two persons one is me and another is my co panelist subhash sorry for uh, dragging you in here subhash so yes you send subhash to the coaching class okay so the coaching class is for say one year duration subhash get to attend the econometrics coaching class but i don't go for the coaching class at the end of the coaching both me and subhash will take a test on econometrics okay so what is the result it's obvious right subhash gets 90 out of 100 marks and i get 70 out of 100 so what is the difference between the treated and control treated is dr subhash and control is me so the difference between us is 20 marks now my question is can you interpret that the impact of econometrics coaching is 20 marks or can you say that if a person gets the econometrics coaching he will get 20 marks more than the person who doesn't receive the treatment so i usually follow a interactive way of teaching so i will be uh, i will keep asking you questions assuming that you are with me assuming that you are answering to my questions okay so my question here is can you say that the difference of 20 marks is due to the econometrics coaching so if you are with me then no you cannot make that causal inference that the difference of 20 marks is attributed to the coaching why so you might have already thought through the entire thing so there is a difference between subhash and me even apart from the coaching there are so many other differences between me and subhash that we call as pre treatment difference so whenever you are using impact assessment literature we often use this term pre treatment differences so the differences apart from the treatment here treatment is econometrics coaching but apart from that subhash is better than me in mathematics he he has better experience his iq is more than me so all those differences could have also caused the 20 marks difference so let us recall the definition of impact again impact is e expected value of yi1 minus expected value of yi0 so if you if you convert our case into that definition the first part expected value of yi1 is nothing but econometric scores of subhash with coaching and the second part ey0 is scores of subhash if he doesn't receive the coaching but can you observe both in same point of time no you could do that one before the training is started you could take a test for subhash and after the test is over you can give another test to subhash but both are at two different points of time there is a one year gap between in which subhash has grown his experience has improved he might have read so many other uh, literature apart from the training he received so so there there will be so many other differences so even that is not going to tell you about impact so what is the ideal scenario then ideal scenario is you have a clone of subhash which means to say you have two subhash with me subhash underscore one subhash underscore two then subhash underscore one will get the uh, training and subhash underscore two will not get the training and at the end of the training both subhash underscore one and underscore two will take the test then the difference whatever you get in the score is exclusively due to coaching because there is nothing else to differentiate between subhash 1 and subhash 2 but come back to the reality we don't have clones here right so the summary of this thought experiment i want you to remember is i am not a good counterfactual to subhash even without coaching he would get more marks than me that is due to pre treatment differences so i am not good counterfactual to subhash so what we do then what is the general approach we take so from the thought experiment i have established that yi1 and yi0 are not observed simultaneously this much is clear now so what we do is we take data from two separate groups and we call them as treated group and control group or beneficiary non beneficiary or adopter and non adopter we need to uh, have a notation for that as well let us use the term or the letter t so from here onwards if i say t is equals to 1 remember that the unit is from the treated group 
if i use the word t is equals to 0 then it is from the control group so when we have two groups not two individuals then the treatment effect notation changes so i am translating the same definition of impact with groups so impact is nothing but expected value of yi1 given t is equals to 1 minus expected value of yi0 given t is equals to 1 so again translate this to uh, common language that is what would be the income level of adopters in the treatment group minus what is the income level of non adopters in the treatment group confusing right so this highlighted in red that is income level of non adopters in treatment group is not observed because everybody in the adopter group has adopted the technology so what we do since this is not observed we replace it with expected value of yi0 given t is equals to 0 which means the yield levels or income levels of non adopters not from the treated group but from the control group so we have swapped it so it is not impact but it is impact hat that is nothing but estimate of impact Okay, we have replaced the uh, term highlighted in red with a term highlighted in green. Okay, so as long as expected value of yi0 given t is equals to 1 is same as expected value of yi0 given t is equals to 0, the bias is 0. Okay, so as earlier case, let us translate this jugglery, this equation into common language which everybody can understand. What is this expected value of yi0 at t is equals to 1? These are from the adopter group, but the yield level is before the adoption. What is this highlighted in green? This is expected value of income or yield when the technology is not out adopted in the control group. So if you take out the technology, the treated group and control group are exactly similar. Am I making sense to you? So when you take out the adoption, when you take out the high yielding variety, the outcome variables of both treated group and control group are similar. If this condition holds good, then the bias is zero, okay? But think of adoption of agriculture technology. Think of adoption of a high yielding variety. Will this adoption holds good, okay? So uh, let us go back to the theory of adoption according to uh, our agricultural extension. There are many theories of adoption. Our adoption categories are there. So according to that, who are the adopters? Who are the early adopters of a technology? So if you understand that, the common consensus in the literature is that adopters are dominated by well-educated farmers. The farmers who are having better extension contact, usually the large farmers, better motivated farmers, these are dominating the adopter category. But who are the non-adopters? Usually the laggard, those who have less education, those who have less motivation. I'm not talking about everyone. On an average, the adopters are dominated by laggards, whereas adopters are dominated by early adopters or innovators. So, Apart from the technology also, there is so much differentiating between the adopters and non-adopters. This is the point I would like to make. And another term that is very commonly used in impact assessment literature is data exchangeability. So don't worry about the jugglery, uh, uh, the usage. Data exchangeability is nothing but, so you have treatment group and you have control group. Let us do a magic and make all the control units as treated and all the treated units as control, which means you are interchanging the treatment and control group. If the Im impact uh, estimate that you have calculated is to be reliable, then there should be data exchangeability, which means even if you con convert all the treated units into control and control units into the treated, the impact should not change, okay? So when this can happen, Again, I'm coming back to the problem of counterfactual. The treatment group and control group should be similar to each other in all aspects except for the treatment. When this is true, the comparison group without treatment is called counterfactual. You have adopter 
and you have control group if the control group you have is exactly like your treatment group they have similar education similar literacy similar motivation then only you can call it as a proper counterfactual let us go back to uh, principles of experimentation which i am sure all of you have studied in your undergraduate courses there is a principle called as local control so local control is nothing but suppose you are doing a trial on um, say nitrogen uh, uh, doses for crops so that is your treatment 50% of recommended dose 70% of recommended dose 100% of recommended dose that is your treatment then what is this local control principle suppose you do weeding for treatment 1 you should also do weeding to all other treatments you cannot do weeding to treatment 1 and leave others because weeding is not your treatment which means to say local control ensures that only difference between the treated group and the uh, check is the treatment nothing else if you do weeding in one and leave others then the difference in yield is not only due to treatment that is nitrogen dose but also due to the differences in weeding okay uh, but uh, in agriculture case adopters of agriculture technology are educated motivated better extension contact whereas our non adopter category are laggards uh, in general less educated in general less uh, income holders small farmers so the problem here that i want to emphasize is in most of the observational studies observational studies mean we social scientists do not do experiments except for rct we go to field and take the data as such that is observational study and in these observational studies the problem is we do not have a clean counterfactual our comparison group is not similar to our treatment group then you will be asking me so when can this treatment group and control group that you are talking about can be similar so this can happen only if the allocation is random not this term allocation is random uh, let me switch back to uh, one very good paper by antoniakis in 2010 he highlights three basic conditions to make causal claim which means only if these three conditions holds good then only you will be able to make causal claim that y is causing x or x is causing y whatever way it is so here i am denoting e as effect so change in income or change in yield is the effect and t be the cause that is technology or the program so the first condition if you want to make causal claim or in other words if you want to claim that this is impact t must precede e which means you should have adopted the technology first then only you should see the effect this is very basic condition and i am not going to spend any time about it second is important there should be strong and undeniable correlation between the treatment and the effect okay this is where um, the principle or the theory of change comes into picture okay and the third the most dangerous condition of all the reason why we cannot claim impact the relationship between the treatment and the effect should not be explained by any other causes so in econometric terminologies we say that treatment is independent of all other covariates okay so this brings me to the point of impact pathway okay what is this impact pathway so the second point that we highlighted is that there should be a strong and undeniable correlation between the outcome variable that you are talking about and the treatment so here i am giving you one example so this is a project about striga striga control in nigeria i have just picked it up from uh, some source i have mentioned the source but it's not visible in the slide and the outcome variable that they are measuring is livelihood improvement in the farmers so you should develop a pathway stating that because of your training program how livelihood will improve so you should say so because of my training the knowledge level of farmers will improve so it will uh, spiral a learning cycle because of that they will adopt better technologies and from that they will have higher income 
from the higher income the livelihood will improve this is one pathway the second pathway is farmers attitude and perceptions will change and because of that the neighboring villages will also adopt that technology because of that also the livelihood will will improve and farmers will further modify that knowledge you have given and because of that also livelihood will improve so this is how a impact pathway is prepared so impact pathway is nothing but from the technology you have given why do you expect that income or yield will change let me uh, switch over to a common example suppose you are the example i have already referred to you before uh it is a example of bt cotton adoption suppose you your outcome variable is simply income then you have to explain how bt cotton adoption is expected to increase the income so one simple pathway hypothetically i am explaining to you could be uh, whenever bt cotton is adopted the sucking pest population will be less sucking pest population is less means less pesticide use less pesticide use means cost will be reduced cost reduction will ultimately results in increase in net income this is one pathway second pathway is reduction in pest population means increase in yield increase in yield means increase in gross return through this also net returns will increase so this is how impact pathway if you decide to do a impact evaluation don't directly go into outcome variable regression and methods first you have to develop a impact pathway and the third condition the most dangerous of all what happens when the cause or adoption is explained by other causes okay so so far i think i have already established to you that adopters are better educated better connected than non adopters even if you don't agree for a matter now be with me adopter category is different from the non adopter category let us consider t is equals to 1 for adopter and 0 for non adopter so we write t is a function of education and extension contact which means who is a adopter is a function of education and extension contact if this is true then only we can say that adopters are dominated by educated and better connected farmers but the problem here is there can be variables which can simultaneously affect the cause cause here is treatment or adoption and also the effect effect here is yield or income we call them as confounders please note this term because this is a term which is very frequently used in impact assessment literature so whenever there is a term or whenever there is a variable which affects both your yield as well as the adoption then that is called as confounder education is a classic confounder why let let us exam examine the situa situation education if the farmer is better educated then he is more probable to be a adopter than non adopter which means education is affecting your cause or that is nothing but adoption process you can also claim that a educated farmer on an average will have a better income or better yield because he is in general a better farmer than the less educated or you can even take motivation as a classic case a motivated farmer is more probable to be in the adopter category and also a motivated farmer is also more likely to have higher income so motivation is a confounder so whenever there is a confounder then you will have a conflict you will not be sure whether the increase in yield of the adopter is due to the cause that you are talking about or due to the confounder that is motivation so no doubt that adopter is having higher income but you cannot say whether that higher income is because of the better motivation better education better land holding or it is because of the technology that you are talking about the confounders can also be observed confounders that is education which you can measure but they can also be unobserved confounders that is motivation so simple saying it in the simple language the problem with the confounder is whenever there is a confounder you will not be able to make the causal claim that because of the treatment only the in income of adopters have increased because there are other confounders which is also affecting the income 
but these confounders are more dangerous than you think confounders also cause estimation problems this brings me to the topic of endogeneity so in econometrics endogeneity is a situation where the explanatory variable or the independent variable that we are using in a model is correlated with the error term so this is a assumption of ols the assumption is that the explanatory variable is not correlated with the error term if that assumption is violated then it will cause bio biased estimates so if the endogeneity is not modeled estimation will be biased this is not the biggest problem the biggest problem is direction of bias is also impossible to estimate so if if you are sure that uh, the bias is in the positive direction then you can say that this is a overestimation but you don't know for sure whether it is a overestimation whether it is a underestimation you are not even sure whether it, the sign is positive or the sign is negative ultimately what i am trying to tell you is if you do not account for endogeneity then the estimate the regression model you have used is useless that is garbage in and garbage out this is the reason why we cannot use a dummy variable regression to estimate the impact let me come to Uh, dummy variable regression after i explain the forms of endogeneity so i am not going to explain this econometrics portion to you if you are interested then i will uh, recommend uh, woolrich's uh, basic book on econometrics so endogeneity can happen if there is specification error specification error is nothing but there is an important variable that you should have included in the model but Uh, maybe because it is unobserved or maybe because you could not measure it you exclude that variable that is omitted variable bias so that will also cause endogeneity issue measurement error omitting a fixed effect model whenever you are talking about a panel data regression simultaneity is when uh, you are dependent variable and independent variable are causing each other which means dependent variable is affecting independent variable independent variable is affecting your dependent variable there is two way causation that is also dangerous and self selection that is what we are interested in this impact assessment uh so i will give you a very brief two minutes introduction on omitted variable bias as endogeneity let us assume that actual model that you are interested is yi is a function of x1i and x2i this is the real model that uh, you are interested to build and the actual error term is ui okay i hope you are with me but for some reason we cannot measure x2i okay uh, maybe x2i was not observed or x2i was not measured so you do not include x2i and run a modified model so now the uh, real model that you are running is just x1i and the new error term is vi in place of ui the difference between first model and second model is you are not including x2i here so since x2i is not included in the model you know that x2i is a important explanatory variable of yi so its effect on y is captured now in the variable vi so vi now has the effect of x2 as well so in most cases x1i and x2i the correlation between them is not equal to 0 i am not talking about multicollinearity that is perfect correlation between x1i and x2i there will be some correlation between x1i and x2i in real time data whatever type of data you take so by intuition your x1i that you are using in this model is also correlated with the error term so the message i am going to give here is if you are exclude a important variable from the model a variable which is important to explain the why then your explanatory variable x1i which you have included is correlated with the error term in the model because of that the delta 1 the regression estimate that you are calculating is biased so this regression model becomes useless because of this endogeneity issue now let me come back to the dummy variable regression why it cannot be used for estimating the impact first let me ex uh, explain to you what is this dummy variable regression for measuring impact 
Suppose y is the income of the former and t is a dummy variable for adoption. Here dummy variable means it will take the value of 1 if he is an adopter and value of 0 if he is a non-adopter. So the you can run a simple model where yi is a function of the technology adoption. Why I am calling this as a dummy variable regression model because the variable ti is a dummy variable. You also include a host of all other explanatory variables which are going to affect yi and you run a regression model. Okay. If everything is perfect, then beta 1, the regression coefficient here, should be telling you the change in income if Ti moves from 0 to 1, which means if a farmer is an adopter, how much additional income he will earn compared to the non-adopter, that, that will be given by the term beta 1. But unfortunately, the thing is not that easy. Why? Because the term Ti is endogenous. So whenever this term T is endogenous, beta 1 is biased. Beta 1 is biased means you cannot use this. Why I'm saying T is endogenous? So recall the previous discussion we had. The variable T is not an exogenous variable. T is not a random variable. T is in fact determined by selection function. So if we do not include the entire selection function in our model, then it is as good as omitted variable bias. So omitted variable bias, it will lead to endogeneity, which I have already established in my previous slide. Okay, I want to make it even clearer to you. Selection equation is nothing but it will, he will take the value of one if he is an adopter. And that equation we will model as a function of all the explanatory variables which are going to affect the adoption. So whatever things which affects the adoption, that is modeled in the selection equation. Because the factors which are affects the adoption also affects your income, this entire selection process should also be a part of this model. But there is no way in a dummy variable regression you are going to do that. Excuse me. Okay, then, is this the only problem that we have? So if this selection equation is not being incorporated in the model, then the error term EI, that is the error term of the selection equation, and the error term of the outcome equation are correlated. When these two are correlated, the adoption variable or the selection variable is also correlated with the error term. Forgive me for the juggleries. So the ultimate summary that I am going to give you is you cannot use the dummy variable regression because the treatment variable is endogenous. Second thing is there are unobserved confounders also. For example, motivation. Motivation is not measured. Even if you try to measure it with a scale or do something, it is still uh, with measurement errors. Okay. So because of the unobserved confounders also, the selection equation is also affected and your outcome equation is also affected. In layman terms, the treated and control group are not comparable. You cannot simply take the mean yield of treated and mean yield of control and compare and say it has impact. You cannot use a dummy variable regression also because the selection variable is endogenous. There are observed and un unobserved confounders. So even regression is a no solution. Then you will ask, what is the solution then? The ultimate solution is random allocation or random assignment. So what is this random assignment of the treatment? Uh, let us uh, switch back to a, another hypothetical case. We economists love hypothetical cases to drive home the point. Assume that you have a pool of farmers. Okay. Uh, you have say 10,000 uh, farmers with you. <clears throat> and who gets to sow the new variety of the seed is decided randomly. Yeah, I know it is a hypothetical case, but suppose this is the case that you have 10,000 farmers gathered around you and from the 10,000 farmers, you will pick a lottery or lucky draw and those who wins the lucky draw or lottery, they will be sowing the variety of new seeds. 
okay and those who doesn't win the draw they will be going back to the conventional variety this requires so many assumptions you know you you have to be the sole owner of that variety you are the only source of that variety then only you can do that suppose if you do that what will happen i want you to imagine this with me even an illiterate farmer in the pool has the same chance of being in the adopter group as that of educated farmer because you are using a lottery or lucky draw that is what randomization will do to you when you pick the adopter and non adopters randomly what you expect is that treated group and control group will be exactly similar to each other on an average individually they may be different but on an average they will be exactly similar so your variable t or the selection variable will become completely random there is no selection equation to worry about you can directly take the difference of mean yield of adopters as well as non adopters why because adopter group on an average and non adopter group on an average are exactly similar to each other so this is what randomized control trials will do but every one of us cannot afford to conduct an rcd now immediate question that everyone will ask is i am going for random sampling so there is no problem of impact assessment for me no random allocation is different random sampling is different okay so how it is different let me explain with the help of a simple uh, visual representation i have taken this from uh, devesh and modified it so suppose this is the initial population that we are talking about and here the color of the dot represents the how rich the household is if the color is brown then it is a richer household if it is a uh, yellow one then it is a poorer household this is the initial population and adoption takes place naturally you are not doing any rct and rich farmers because they can afford the because they are educated because they are better motivated they tends to adopt the technology on a larger scale whereas non adopter is dominated by the yellow dots who are the poorer farmers so even when you do random sampling from the adopters you pick 10 and from the non adopters you pick 10 even then your random sample will also have the adopters are dominated by the rich farmers and non adopters are dominated by poor farmers so again you don't have a counterfactual so i am done with the principles of impact assessment the summary so far is you cannot compare adopters with non adopter this is because there is no clean counterfactual you cannot use dummy variable regression because there is endogeneity you can do random allocation but everybody cannot go for rct in observational studies you cannot go for rct so we have a set of important impact assessment methods regression adjustment is one method propensity score matching that i am going to deal today is another method then we have coarse and exact matching which is a next version of psm a different version of psm then we have inverse probability weighted regression adjustment which is a improvement over ra and psm then we have regression discontinuity design then we have difference indifference method which i will be covering tomorrow then we have randomized control trials then we have instrumental variable and endogeneity switching regression which you will learn in the subsequent classes so let me uh, start our discussion on propensity score matching before directly going into uh, propensity score matching let me detail you about what is this matching process and how this matching process will solve the pro problem of uh, the uh, lack of counterfactual let's continue our earlier example impact of technology adoption on farmers income now we will get more specific now for simplicity let us assume that there are seven farmers in adopter category and uh, there are seven farmers in non adopter category so i am giving you just one variable now that is education okay the adopters education is given here and the non adopters education is given here i am measuring education as years of education okay and i have also calculated the mean values so one simple uh, uh, difference that you can already note here is adopters have a mean ed education of 9.7 years non adopters have a mean education of 5 years 
okay so so from the so far discussion that we had these two are not good counterfactuals that much we are sure okay what if we can match so for each unit in the treated can i pick one person from the control who is having a similar education that is the whole principle of matching so for each person in the treated group i have to find a person in the control group who is also having a similar education score okay so now i have matched it for the first person in the treatment group the education is 10 years i have a person in the control group who is also having the education 10 years that is d so i can say one is a match for d for the second unit the education is 12 years and for him i have a person who is having education of 11 years so two is matched with g third person has a education of 4 years so i have b who is also educated 4 years so i have a matched pair three so what i am doing is based on the observed covariate i am matching adopter with the non adopter so what we what is happening within this matched pair if you compare one and d in both of them education is same so the only difference between them is treatment d has not adopted the technology but one has adopted the technology so some way we are creating a counterfactual from the data observational data we call these methods as quasi experimental methods excuse me we call them as quasi experimental methods <clears throat> because we are not doing an actual experiment <clears throat> but what we are doing is we are collecting the data as it is in the field bringing it into our lab and from that we are trying to match the units which are similar based on some observed covariates and once you do the matching they are similar with respect to the covariates on which we are doing matching and they can be compared one is a good d is a good counterfactual to one g is a good counterfactual to two so far so good but what if we add another variable so now we have added another variable we have added a variable land okay so the mean land holding size of adopter is 5 hectare mean land holding size of the non adopter is 3.9 hectare again we can see that adopter farmers are in on an average large farmers compared to the non adopter farmers now can we do the matching now so when you do matching with respect to education one is a good combination with d d is a good pair with one but one has a land holding side of size of 4 but d has a land holding size of 2 so it is not a match so with respect to education d is a good match but with respect to land c is a good match right there is a conflict let us go to the unit 2 with respect to education G is a good match because it has a education of eleven, and uh, it, uh, adopter second has an education of twelve. Adopter two has a land holding size of two, but the uh, G in the non-adopter category has a land holding size of ten. It is not a good match. With respect to land, the good match would be D. So what is happening now is when you add an additional variable, there is a conflict. you are not sure whether to match with respect to the first variable or with respect to this variable so this is what we call as curse of dimensionality when you simply match with respect to one or two variable it is very easy to match but when you increase the number of variables with respect to uh, you have to match then there is a conflict with respect to one variable a is a good match with respect to second variable b is a good match so when you increase the dimension dimension is nothing but how many variables you have for matching when you increase the dimension matching becomes increasingly difficult this is called as curse of dimensionality that is where propensity score matching comes into picture i told you earlier that is it is a quasi experimental method which means we construct the counterfactual uh, outcome uh, based on some experiment which is not a actual field experiment and what we are using here is 
we are using propensity score to combine the information on many covariates into one variable what we are trying to do is matching as earlier but instead of taking education and land we are combining the information contained in education and land into one single variable that is nothing but the propensity score and then we will match based on this propensity score which means we will calculate the propensity score which is a combination of other variables then use that propensity score as a basis of matching then what is this propensity score so technically speaking probability score sorry propensity score is the probability of the unit being in the treated group conditional upon the covariates used in the estimation so if you remember the selection equation that i spoke to you earlier adoption ti is a dummy variable which takes one for adopter and zero for non adopter we run this model adoption as a function of all the confounders that are available we have to be very specific in choosing the confounders all those variable which affects the program participation or the outcome should be included in the model and which model we have to use if you remember the yesterday's class whenever your dependent variable is a dummy which is one zero type we have to use uh, either a probit or a logit model so we will estimate this selection equation first and then we calculate the ti hat are you aware about what is ti hat ti hat is nothing but the estimated value of the probability okay so estimated value of probability is calculated after running a probit model again i am stressing one point understand try to understand why we are doing this don't focus on how we are doing it i will come to the part of how we are doing when i talk about software okay for now understand as a first step we are going to estimate a probit or logit model where our dependent variable is adoption and after we run the model we calculate the expected value of probability that is what we are calling it as propensity score once you get the propensity score we use propensity score as a basis of matching you can see that propensity score is a probability probability always ranges between 0 and 1 so propensity score will always range between 0 and 1 let me quickly go through psm assumptions this is important for you to understand because it is equally important for you to know when to use a particular model but even more important is when not to use a model okay second thing is you should not be unnecessarily confident about your model you are used psm okay but psm also has assumptions and limitations which you should know before making the causal claims okay the first assumption that we have is conditional independence assumption so there exists a set of x covariates remember what is covariate these are all the independent variables that we are using to calculate the propensity score so there exist a set of variables once we adjust for all this variable potential outcomes are independent of treatment status what it is saying is once you estimate the propensity score and match it based on the propensity score then there is nothing else to differentiate between the treatment group and control group this is also called as selection of on observables because we are assuming that all the covariates which matters are observed and all the covariates that matter are included in the model if there are any unobserved covariates then this assumption will not hold good but unfortunate part is only we can make sure that we have included all the relevant variables but we cannot test this assumption econometrically or statistically the second assumption that we have is common support assumption recall what we are doing here is we are calculating the propensity score in the first step then we are matching the treated unit and control units based on the propensity score but what if you have a propensity score of a treated unit the propensity score is 0.9 
and there is no control unit which has a nearby propensity score we call it as out of common support which means there is no nearby unit for a particular treated unit to compare if that is the case we call it as lack of common support how do you test the common support assumption we actually graph it using the k density plot so here this is the first part is the k density plot of propensity score for non participants the second one is the density of scores for participants so here this is the region of common support don't worry about peak these two curves no need not to overlap perfectly okay but there should be a region of overlapping if there is no region of overlapping there is no common support if there is no common support you cannot use propensity score matching okay so this is the example of poor balancing okay so if a particular unit is here in the left side of your graph there is a comparable unit you can compare even when you have another unit in the right side of the graph it falls in the region of common support there you have both the participants and non participants you can match it you can make a comparison but assume there is a unit on the extreme right side there is no non participant to match there so that unit is out of common support so let us examine this graph so whenever you see a common support graph this is the graph from my own study so if you see this graph what are the things that you should observe the range of p score is between 0.01 to 0.5 so the p score is ranging from 0 to 0.5 that is the first observation that you should be making the dotted brown line is for the control units and the blue line is for the treated units for most units in treated there are units from the control in the p score distribution so there is a sufficient overlap except for this very small region where there are treated units but there are no control units but their propen propensity score range in that is very very small it is from 4.49 to 5 in that range so you can ignore that so this is what you have to observe as soon as you calculate the propensity score you have to obtain the common support graph and you have to examine again i am stressing this point you should be more worried about why we are doing this part than how you are doing why i am saying this most of the software packages automatically have this assumption loaded into them which means to say you need not to check this assumption because it will take care of this automatically if you give just one command but you should also know what is going behind the software what it is doing behind the screen that you should be aware then only you can be confident about the results so you can always plot the propensity score distribution and you can see it yourself excuse me okay now i am coming to the crux of the methodology so the step 1 i have already talked about this we need to estimate a model for program participation so selection equation is the program participation equation here what is the dependent variable please think through it it is a selection equation so your dependent variable is adoption or participation participation as a function of all the covariates and you run a logit probit or multinomial probit model depending on how many categories you have but the key question here is which variable should you include in this model have you heard of a kitchen sink regression uh, i am sure most of you have not heard kitchen sink regression because because it is not given in any textbook kitchen sink regression is what is a kitchen sink whatever left out food you will throw it in kitchen sink similarly many regression that we see uh, is like kitchen sink whatever variable you have you throw it into a regression model and you run a model your model should not be a kitchen sink model so all the variables which are important should be included in the model how do you know which variable is important that is where literature review will come into picture 
that is where your understanding of the problem will come into picture a standard practice while using propensity score matching a standard practice in any impact assessment uh, paper is that you give a list of variables that you are using in your regression model and mention why you are using this model what is your theoretical prediction why is this variable important in deciding the program participation <clears throat> suppose you say education is important why education is important you can say that educated farmers are more probable to adopt a technology you can quote which are the papers which are saying this that is how you select the variable all the variable which are either confounders what is confounder confounder is a one <coughs> excuse me <coughs> confounder is a one which either affects the outcome sorry which affects both the outcome as well as the adoption so you have to make sure that you include all those variable in your regression i am also giving you a hint here you have a stata package the name of the stata package is p score it is a user written command you can use that command second thing that you do in propensity score matching is defining the region of common support that i have already explained in detail and the p score uh, ps match 2 is another command that we uh, we will use for propensity score matching all those commands have already inbuilt uh, uh, commands for ensuring common support but i advise you to plot it and see it yourself whether there is common support or not if there is common no common support one could be there is no common support in reality which means you cannot city score matching you have to use some other uh, matching for impact assessment there is no solution for that second thing you could try is you can try to improve the propensity score estimation procedure which means you have to revisit your model specification how many variables are you are using whether those variables make sense whether there are any issues with those variables most people i have seen uh, many people i have seen using the models they do not tabulate the variable that they are using there will be so many outliers in the data there will be so many errors in the data the model is not taking the variables properly then you simply run the regression there could be issue with that so i ask you to revisit your model specification whether you are including all the relevant variable or not then you have to decide but if there is no common support you cannot use psm second thing what is this balancing test in propensity score matching balancing test is very very important now let us go back uh, a few instants and recall the steps that we have understood first step we are calculating propensity score as a function of explanatory variable and in place of using all those 10 variables for matching you cannot use 10 variables for matching because there is curse of dimensionality instead of those 10 variables you are using propensity score matching sorry propensity score for matching but are you sure that the units having same propensity score also has same value of those variables whether units having same propensity score are they really similar to each other or not we have to establish that that is what we call as balancing test i am going back to our uh, hypothetical example that we did now assume that first step is over we have already calculated the calculated the propensity scores for both adopters and non adopters and this is the propensity scores for all the seven adopters as well as the seven non adopters the next step is to match each adopter with non adopter having similar propensity score but before you go for that matching you have to test the balancing so in balancing test what i have done here is i have arranged the units in the increasing order of their propensity scores so unit 6 has the least propensity score that is 0.4 and from non adopter a has the least propensity score but is 0.38 so i have arranged the units in the increasing order of the propensity scores and once i do that then i am dividing the entire distribution into different strata 
So the first strata I am talking to you about is point probability propensity score of point three five to point five. All those units having propensity scores of point three five to point five are in first strata. And in the second strata, I have all those units which the propensity score distribution is between point five and point seven. What I did first, I calculated propensity score. Next, I arranged the propensity scores in the increasing order. Then I divided the propensity scores into different strata. Now observe the first strata here. In the first strata, from the adapter you have three units: six, one, and four. From the non-adapters, you have A, F, and B. So in both these adapters and non-adapters within the first strata, the propensity scores is almost similar. It is between 0.35 and between 0.5. so you can say that within this strata propensity score is almost similar now what we need to test is within this propensity score are these farmers similar or not with respect to all those 10 variables which you have used for calculation of propensity score in this hypothetical example i have just used education and age okay so what we need to do is we need to do a t test for land and education within this strata the assumption is that within this strata propensity scores are similar but are they similar with respect to land and education now think with me whether this t test should be significant or non significant if it is significant what that signifies and if it is not significant what that signifies ha huh. then i want you to observe another unit the seventh unit has a propensity score of 0.98 but if you observe the entire non adapters there is no one after 0.75 so this unit is out of common support you eliminate that variable before matching because there is no one from non adapter to match it so if t test turns out to be significant then there is a problem then strata will tell you that the propensity scores are not balanced if it is significant what is the interpretation of it the adopters and non adopters might be having similar propensity scores but still there is a difference in covariates that is education and land so you are trying to match person with having a same p score but even after matching it will be useless because the difference with respect to education and land still exist even in the matched pair so you cannot go ahead and do the matching so in this case matching based on p score makes no sense so what is the solution if you run the model and it is not balanced you have to go back to your model specification you have to add or remove variables you have to add cross products you have to add quadratic terms what do you mean by quadratic terms so excuse me quadratic terms are nothing but suppose you have age or you have land land is a perfect example uh, usually you say that as the land increases the adoption also increases but after a certain limit after land crosses 10 acres the adoption falls it is a bell shaped curve so if you want to include a bell shaped curve in your regression model you have to use two variables for land land as well as land square so you have to do such experiments with your model specification you have to think through your model more carefully think if you have excluded any important variable which de determines the project program participation think through the pro uh, selection model that you have and recalculate the propensity score then redo the entire process this may looks a very simple process but trust me getting the balancing right is the most difficult part in propensity score matching i have a paper in propensity score matching uh, in agriculture economics research review on crop insurance and in that uh, research i i took around one and a half month just to get the specification right and just to get the balancing property satisfied this is most important thing you cannot run the model without balancing property being satisfied but unfortunately there are no specific guidelines on how to achieve the balancing property 
there is no hard and fast tools you do this then you will get the specification you add this variable you get the balancing property there is no such guideline that is one of the advantage disadvantages of the uh, peace score now first step you have calculated propensity score second step you have tested the assumption of common support and balancing everything is set now you have to match participants with non participants you have to match adopters with non adopters there are different uh, matching estimators one is called nearest neighbor matching that is you have a propensity score distribution for adopter you have propensity score distribution for non adopter for each adopter you will go to the non adopter category and pick a participant non participant who is having nearest propensity score so that is why we call it as nearest neighbor matching if you pick just one nearest neighbor it becomes nn1 if you pick three neighbors who have nearest propensity score it becomes nn3 if you pick five participants it becomes nn5 but there is a issue with nearest neighbor matching there is a possibility that you might end up matching a person with propensity score of 0.8 because with a person having propensity score of just 0.4 because he is the nearest neighbor in the data set there is no one else in the vicinity so then again there is a issue for that we have caliper matching where you specify a range a range within which the value will be matched suppose caliper is 0.1 which mean for each unit in the treated it will match to other nearest neighbor who is in the vicinity of 0.1 propensity score that is what we call caliper matching there is even stratification matching you make different strata in the high ascending order of propensity score and within the strata whatever control units are there that will be matched with the treated units but in the impact assessment literature uh, if you see any research papers uh, on uh, impact assessment using propensity score matching they do not restrict to any one method of matching they will experiment with all the different methods of matching and they will give it in a table okay for this you have a different stata package ps match to nn match to and tfx now uh, interpretation of the results so many of you uh, are interested in how to interpret the uh, results of propensity score matching ultimately this is what you get when you do all the circus that i have told you the common support the balancing or you do all those things and the finally you get is just one this table so the table title says that this is the results of psm for impact of shg participation on household per capita expenditure when you get this table the first thing that you have to examine is what is your outcome variable outcome variable in this case is household per capita expenditure <coughs> the variable name in uh, my analysis is logarithm of expend expenditure total so that is your outcome variable next thing you have to observe is the att att is nothing but a impact indicator sorry uh, i was constrained for time i could not discuss about average treatment effect on treated average treatment effect on uh, average treatment effect per se but for now assume that att is nothing but your impact okay that is where you have to look for impact then observe for the difference so what it is saying is after matching the mean value of treated is 8.41 mean expenditure in the control is 8.42 and the difference between the treated and control is 0.01 which means the difference between the treatment unit and the control unit that can be attributed to shg participation is 0.01 units how do you interpret it remember i have taken logarithm here so you have to take anti log before interpreting and the unit of the outcome variable is remaining constant so i have measured expenditure total in taka taka is nothing but bangladeshi currency so i have measured expenditure to expenditure total in taka so your impact will also be having the same unit of measurement that is expenditure total in taka per person per year so how do you interpret now 
because of shg participation the uh, the household expenditure has decreased by 0.011 taka per year but you have to take the uh, exponential or anti log when you take the anti log it will become 1 so the ultimate interpretation is if the member participates in shg then the household expenditure will reduce by 1 taka per person per year but don't jump to the conclusion yet the t statistic says it is not significant you will do this interpretation only if the t statistics tell you that the impact is significant so what interpretation you can draw now t statistics indicates that the effects are not significant so we could not find any empirical evidence to show that shg participation on household has any impact on per capita expenditure right don't say that shg participation has no impact on per capita expenditure because the power of test may not be sufficient your sample size may not be sufficient for drawing that inference so a safer option for you to say that in your analysis you did not find any empirical evidence to say that there is impact okay few other issues that i will quickly brush up before i move on to the hands on session sorry i am taking more time so boot strapping of standard errors so because uh, what is standard errors i am not going to explain this is the uh, important variable standard error is very important for you to make hypothesis testing okay so standard error regular standard error cannot be used here because you are not taking the actual data you are not taking the actual sample which you have taken based on a sampling procedure but you are doing some matching within the data so what is recommended for you is bootstrapping bootstrapping is nothing but from the data set the software will take 50 or 100 random samples within the data sets you have calculate the standard error separately and it will take the average of standard errors and that standard error will be used for hypothesis testing so generally we will not use uh, regular standard errors in case of uh, propensity score matching we use bootstrap the standard errors but remember bootstrap the standard errors are not valid with nearest neighbor matching it is valid only with caliper and all other based methods of matching if you are using uh, uh, nearest neighbor matching then you should use analytical standard errors which uh, is available with the most of the software packages second point is i told you that you can also use caliper matching but what should be the size of caliper if the size of caliper is too big then uh, common support assumption will be violated and you will be losing too many observations those units which are outside common support will be dropped before doing the analysis so you will end up losing too many uh, observations third thing is sensitivity analysis Uh, i will not be detailing how the sensitivity analysis is done but you should know that propensity score method is based on a very strong assumption that uh, only the observed covariates matter but what if there are unobserved confounders which also affect the program participation then you do a sensitivity analysis to tell you that how it is going to affect if the if there are unobserved confounders what will happen to your estimates whether they will say become sensitive or they will remain robust that is what sensitivity analysis is all about advantage of psm is that you don't need a baseline it is a semi parametric method you need a fewer constraints self selection bias will be minimized never say that self selection bias will be completely avoided no no method can ensure that and it's one of the very simple methods to understand and use but it is not free from limitations it is very difficult to test the basic assumptions of psm uh, for example conditional independence assumption there could be hidden bias and uh, i skip the part that uh, P psm mimics crd uh, if you are interested then please read this paper why propensity score should not be used for matching by garrick king and coworkers no guidelines on how to achieve balancing it's more or less trial and error and it is not robust with small samples this is the point that i want to stress uh, right now 
don't do this analysis with 30 adopters and 30 non adopters so it requires a minimum sample and that minimum sample is continues to be debated in the literature so at least you should have 500 plus uh, samples even this is not a recommendation that if you have 500 samples you can run psm you have to test all the assumptions you have to go, uh, see common support assumption and you have to ensure the balancing if everything goes well then only you can use propensity score matching only thing that i can say with surety is larger the sample the better is the performance if you have lesser samples you have to be satisfied with the other methods even if the balancing property is satisfied it doesn't guarantee that propensity score matching will work it never try it with smaller samples I have a list of selected readings for you. Calinido and Capping is a beautiful paper. Some practical guidelines for implementation of PSM. Daheji and Waba also has a very good paper. Antonikas has a very descriptive paper. He talks about the principles of impact assessment. Why can we make a causal claim? When can we make it? When we can't make a causal claim? All these things are given. <clears throat> Me and Subhash has also written a blog on it. Uh, it's like a self propaganda here so you can also refer to our blog on what why and how to do impact assessment which is available in asa blog uh, available at asa excuse me okay <clears throat> and also i have listed a few papers which are using uh, propensity score matching as a estimation procedure sorry i have listed my paper as well there um now let us move on to the hands-on session. So for the hands-on session, I will be using HH underscore 98 data provided together with Kander et al. A World Bank uh, book published, Handbook of Impact Assessment is the title of the book. In the website of uh, the book, uh, the data set is also given to you. Let me brief you about the data set. So the data is about microcredit program participation in Bangladesh. So the research question that we are trying to address is, what is the impact of participation in self-help group on household expenditure? So the research question is clear. If there is a household which is participating in the SHG, what will be its effect or impact on household expenditure? Whenever you do PSM, two variables you should be very careful about. One is selection variable or the treatment variable, which will tell you how many members are there in SHE. And in the data set, please note it down in a paper. DMMFD is your outcome variable. DMMFD stands for whether household has a member in the SHG or not. And the outcome variable, the total household per capita expenditure in the data set, it is given as EXP. TOT. Okay, now I am switching to Stata. Okay, I hope you can see the Stata on your screen. And I have already loaded the data set to you. So, in the data set, so I will give you a quick recap of what are the commands. Okay, so I know that many of you have complained that you are watching over Facebook and you cannot see the cl commands clearly. So whenever it is required, I will be zooming and I will be pausing for a moment for that so that you can take note of what I'm doing and what command I'm typing, okay? So this is the data set I have with me right now. So first thing that you should do whenever you open a particular data set is to describe the data. So I am typing a command now that is saying describe so i'm zooming it for you now i hope you can see so this is the command i'm typing here the command name is describe i'm asking stata to describe all the variables along with its labels so that you can understand the variables better i am clicking enter so as soon as i click enter so it the result window has highlighted all the variables and also its label. So earlier I have told you that 
selection variable in my data set is dmmfd so i am going to zoom on dmmfd yeah this is the variable that we are interested in dmmfd and what is this dmmfd so data set it is named as household has a male micro credit participant so this is the variable which is a selection variable and i am also interest, interested in knowing the outcome variable so that is expenditure total so again i am zooming in on so this is the variable we are interested in expenditure total so what does that say households per capita total expenditure so these are the two variable we are interested in right so hope i hope you are with me right now so the first thing that we are going to do i think in yesterday session also shiva was highlighting so first thing is you should be tabulating the variable to know what is the condition so dmmft so i am going to zoom the command for you okay so the command that i have typed is tabulate dmmft i am asking stata to tabulate the variable dmmft done again i am zooming in right so the stata has given me the results so the variable dmmft is the household has a male micro credit participant and it will take value of 1 if it household has a participant it will take value of 0 if it doesn't have any participant and from the data you can see that there are 220 participants who are having micro credit or who are member of shg and 909 households are not member of shg so there are total of 1129 so how many adopters or how many beneficiaries of shg are there 220 how many non participants 909 my next outcome of interest is exp expenditure total so i am typing exp tot here okay now i do not want to tabulate this variable but i am summarizing this variable why i am summarizing this variable because this is a household expenditure and this is a continuous variable whenever continuous variable is there we always go for summarize sum is a shorthand for summarize so i am going to summarize the variable expenditure total i am going to zoom in now so the variable is household expenditure there are 1129 observation mean expenditure in the data set is 5400 taka so it's a bangladeshi currency and the standard deviation is 4000 the minimum value is 1000 and the maximum value is 47000 whenever you see a continuous variable and whenever you are using it as a important variable in your model you should also see the distribution of the model because many of the models that you use always have um, an assumption on um, what you can say normal distribution and there could be outliers also so you should always check for the distribution of the variable so one common way of testing for the distribution of the variable is k density plot i am typing k density the variable name okay what i am just doing is k density and the variable name okay so i am running the model now wait for the stata to give you a graph okay now you have a graph and now you can clearly see that the distribution is skewed so most of the mean value is centered around here but there are many values in this entire region so it is not following the normal distribution so what is the common approach to make a variable normal one of the simplest option is to take logarithm to it i have already taken the logarithm and created another variable let me call that variable is l exp total so this is the same variable as exp total but we with taking logarithm let me plot the same variable but with logarithm here and let me superimpose the 
normal curve here. So I want you to see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is k density, and I'm using the variable with logarithm, and I'm asking stata to superimpose a normal cover, uh, normal curve over it. Wait for the stata. Now you can see that your um, expenditure total has taken almost a bell shape, and it is matching with the standard normal curve that you you are used to see. Let me open a do file. So, what is do file? Subhash has already explained to you, but again, I am uh, explaining it one more time. You can see the indicator here in stata. That is a, a menu for opening a do file. You you can click on that, okay? And your do file is open. Give me a second. Okay, your do file is open now, and I'm opening my do file. I already written all the commands for today's class and stored it in a do file. So the next thing that I want you to do is, so in Stata, there are few analysis which you can do immediately after installing Stata, which means they come with Stata. But also there are few analysis. Which you need to install. They are called as user-written commands. So as soon as a methodology is developed, some uh, econometrician or some scientist will work on it. They will develop a command for you, and they will upload it into the Stata server. You need to download it first before using it. So one such uh, user-written command that I am going to demonstrate now is T table two. Okay, T table two. so if you want to do t test in stata you have to do it individually for each variable but i want to do t test simultaneously for many variables at once so i want to install t table 2 so command for installing any user written command is ssc install t table 2 t table 2 is the name of the package that you want to install ssc install will ask stata to install it but this command may not always work for you if it doesn't work you can use the alternate command find it f i n d i t i will be using that uh, command in the subsequent uh, demonstration so you just type ssc install table 2 stata will automatically install the command t table 2 in the next step what i am trying to demonstrate to you is Uh, i hope you remember our discussions the detailed discussions that we had our major problem of comparing the adapter non adapter was that adapter and non adapters are different with respect to so many things like education age and so many things but let us test it whether those who are members of sag and those who are not the members of sag are they really different with respect to each other let us test using a t test so the command that i am using here is t table 2 that is the name of the package and all the variables that i want the t test to be done on i have written all the variables okay so this is the access to market this is the head uh, sex of the head of the household this is the age this is the education uh, this is the consumption of rice wheat milk oil egg all those variable i have taken but remember i am also demarcating the groups by typing by dmmfd so i want to see whether adopters and non adopters whether sag members and non sag members are different with respect to these variables this is a simple t test and this is the results that you have here so if you see the results so g1 stands for non members of sag that it is saying value of 0 and these are the members of sag this is the size of the group 900 are non members of sag 220 are members of the sag this is the mean value of the variable this is the variable this is the mean value and what you i want you to focus is this so the mean difference between the groups is given here and the star marks indicate that they are significant too 
what is the conclusion that you can draw from this so the shg members and shg non members they are different with respect to so many parameters we are interested in so the thing is non shg members are not good counterfactual to shg members that makes the points clear we need a method of matching or we need to use any other impact assessment method so far i think i am very clear with you first step if you recall in propensity score matching is the calculation of the propensity scores and in the slide also i have mentioned you that the commonly used approach for calculation of the propensity score is a package called as p score p score is again a user written command and you need to install p score before using that so instead of using ssc install let me do another way find it p score so when you give the command find it p score okay find it p score when you give the command find it p score you are asking stata to identify all the literature and all the packages which have the keyword p score let me search it so stata will be connected to the internet and this is the search page that you are going to get initially it will uh, list the help files example files and stds simply scroll down and if you scroll down i am zooming it for the ben benefit of those who are watching in mobile so you can see here that there it is saying 30 packages found okay so from the list of packages you have to scroll down and you have to identify a package which is p score so this is a package that i am interested in you can see here the p score is written here and it is a program written by becker and others so this is for estimation of average treatment effect average treatment effect is nothing but propensity uh, sorry impact so this is the package that i am interested to install so if you simply click on it then it will open up a pop up window and it will ask you to click here to install so if you click on that tab the stata will automatically install that package you not need not to stay in that window so now p score will be automatically installed into your stata machine okay let me uh, let the process be over okay it is showing error because p score is already there in my system okay now i will start the procedure for estimating the p score i am directly copying the command and pasting it in here this is available in do file this is also available in the help menu okay so i think subhash has already highlighted how to access help menu uh, so if you if you have trouble in recalling the easiest way to learn stata is through help menu you can simply type help p score after installing p score what i am doing is h is the shorthand for help help p score if you simply type it it will directly open up the help menu and if you scroll down it will give you the examples so how you have to type the command and what you have to do every syntax is given so you can use the help menu to uh, run the analysis also so now i am using this command i want you to understand one thing first term i am using is p score sorry first term i am using is p score okay p score is the name of the command and the first variable i am giving is dmmfd if you recall dmmfd is the selection variable in the model and all other variables are the confounders that i have selected i am not going to discuss why each variable is selected in my case that would take eternity for me that would take long time so i am not discussing but remember these variables are those variables which affect the shg participation as well as the household expenditure and the important thing that i want you to focus is this so here i am writing ps98 so ps98 is once this command is run stata will calculate the propensity score and that propensity score is stored as a new variable 
and you have to give a new name to that variable and i am giving the name ps98 instead of ps98 you can give any other name as well then the second part is block id so block id is if you remember the balancing test i spoke about once the propensity score is calculated the propensity scores is arranged in the order then it will be divided into different strata so each strata is given a name and that variable is stored as block f1 and this is common support i told you that don't worry about uh, how to ensure common support because stata already has a inbuilt command for ensuring common support don't worry about the last part it is about the significance level so i am running this model and it gives a set set of results to me so i will explain the results from the start so the first part of the result we are already very sure it has again tabulated the variable tmmfd so it is saying that 909 are non participants of shg and 220 are participants of the shg there is no problem with that then it is running the propensity score it is a iteration based method uh, the shiva was talking about yesterday and it is running the model but remember don't worry about any of the coefficient or its significance or its adjusted r square or its pseudo r square it is not a deterministic model so you should not be worrying about any of these variables or any of these parameters <clears throat> directly go to what stata is saying here now so it is saying the final number of blocks is 4 which means stata has calculated the propensity score it has arranged it in the distribution and it has divided it into four strata or four blocks then it is testing the balancing property okay so it is testing the balancing property now the most disheartening part of the result is this it is saying the balancing property is not satisfied and it is also giving you a recommendation try a different model specification of the propensity score which means what is the model that we have used let me go back to that this is the model that we have used so propensity score dmfd as a function of all these variable so these are the variable you have used to calculate the propensity score but stata is telling you that the balancing property is not satisfied so you have to go back to your model specification you have to re examine whether they they are the right variables for in this model whether have you missed any important variable have you included any variable which is unnecessary so you have to go back to your propensity score calculation and you have to try and get the balancing property satisfied before you move on to the next step and in the last part of the result this is what i was saying so from 0 to 0.1 this is the first strata from 0.1 to 0.2 this is the second strata so finally it has divided the entire propensity score distribution into four strata okay now propensity score you have calculated that but there is a problem in balancing property what you have to do you have to estimate the model again and you have to change the model specification and do it again but before that we have to drop two variables that is ps98 and block f1 because in the previous step itself stata has created propensity score and stored it in the name of ps98 okay so if you if you are not sure let me scroll scroll through the variables window and see here so ps98 is already defined in the data set when the data it is already defined and you ask stata to again create that variable it will give you error message so before doing that we have to drop the variable what i am doing right now is i am changing the model specification which means the previous model i have changed i have added couple of i have removed couple of variables and i am re estimating the model this is only for the demonstration purpose you cannot simply remove a variable which is important for the demonstration purpose i am removing a variable which is not so important and i am trying to re estimate the same model 
this is just to show you you need to change the model specification you need to relook on the variables so i i think uh, you need not uh, need another explanation on the command so i am straight away running the model so let us go back on top so again it is giving the same results first it is tabulating let us not worry about it let us not worry about the pseudo or square let us not worry about any significance you are not going to report it and here is what that matters so the good news is the balancing property is now satisfied only when you get this message that balancing property is satisfied then only you can go ahead and do the next analysis okay so now first step propensity score calculation is done you have estimated the uh, propensity scores it is balanced everything is right now i want you to plot the results and see if the common support assumption is also um ensured anyhow it is ensured because in the command itself you have given but still let us go for a visual demonstration this is the graph that i have earlier shown to you so there is perfect overlap there is no issue with the common support as well so everything set propensity score calculated common support assumption satisfied balancing property satisfied now the next thing is you have to implement matching i prefer to use ps match to another stata package for implementing the matching there are many alternatives to it you can use stata tfx model you can use nn match to uh, there are many alternatives to it but let me for this demonstration use ps match to i am zooming in for uh, for all of you the command that i am using is ssc install ps match to so i need not to do it because in my window uh, my machine it's already installed but still for the demonstration sake i am installing it again okay let the stata install install it okay it's already installed now i will use ps match to command to do propensity score matching as earlier first word in the uh, command that you have written is ps match to that is the name of the command and the first variable is dmmfd that is the selection variable and you have to use same model specification for which you have got the balancing property satisfied so in the balancing property you use a different model and here you use different model that is not correct you have to use the same set of variables here also but the difference here is you have to mention which is the outcome variable so here i am using logarithm value of expenditure total as my outcome variable because expenditure total cannot be used as outcome variable because it is not normal so i prefer to use logarithm of expenditure total so let me run this model okay so it is uh, run the model and the final table which is of importance to you is this this is the way, uh, thing that i have already explained to you in my ppt the outcome variable that we have is log expenditure total and look for average treatment effect on the treated the difference this is your uh, impact but remember your outcome variable you have take logarithm so here the results are in also in logarithm take anti log to it and then go for interpretation the interpretation would be because of participation in shg the household expenditure has reduced by 0.011 i am saying reduced because it has a minus sign but here the t test value is not significant so you cannot draw this inference okay so this is all about and uh, let me also quickly demonstrate uh the different types of matching i won't take much time this is the last thing in my presentation so what i'm doing here is uh the same command i am trying to use but at the end of the command i am trying to change the impact method so i'm writing cal cal stands for caliper matching 
you can change this method of matching from caliper matching to nearest neighbor matching to whatever way you wish so if you want instead of caliper matching nearest neighbor matching with phi you can simply type n phi and run the model so here also the model will run so the results are not much different it is again not significant so this is how you do propensities for matching what you can do to learn this model yourself so this demonstration is devised such a way that i will demonstrate a part to you and you will do the rest so right now what selection variable i have used is dmmfd which means whether the household has a male member participant instead of that there is another selection variable that is called dm dfmfd okay so let me tabulate this so whether household has a female microcredit participant what i demonstrated to you is a male microcredit participant what we have now is female microcredit participant wherein which 595 are participants and 534 are non participants so you can use this selection variable instead of what i have used and rerun the entire methodology to learn the methodology yourself i have already shared the data files with the organizers and this data file is already available in the uh, world bank website as well so you can download the data set and play it uh, and learn the methodology yourself so i think that's it uh, from my side sorry i have taken uh, too much uh, time um, because i had to detail uh the principles of impact assessment as well so apologies for that and thank you very much for the opportunity pinak sir over to you yes and now we can have questions also we, uh, we can extend 3 4 minutes more sure 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 you can take one or two questions okay okay have answered by dr subhas sp but one or two orally you can say sure sure uh, sir can you elaborate more about yeah. impact pathway how can we create uh, impact pathway in a impact assessment study uh, very nice question uh, manmeet kaur um, so there is no set of methods for creating uh, impact pathway impact pathways are created uh, through many methods uh, one thing is close literature review second thing is proper understanding of your research question third thing is group discussion with the beneficiaries you want to interact with the beneficiaries to understand how the impact uh, of the project is felt what are the pathways in which what changed what and how it led to some other change so focus group discussion are a beautiful way of um, uh, creating a impact pathway so that is uh, one and subhash uh, one have... one one more question is from facebook it is by amit choudhary very basic question is asking mm -hmm. can i use propensity score in case of control study design control study design yeah uh if i understood the question properly uh, you mean to say you are doing a experiment and in that can you use psm uh, if you do a experiment uh, you already have local control and the control and you have the perfect control over the experiment so there is no need of propensity score matching so you can simply go for anova and uh, that kind of things rather than propensity score matching propensity score matching is only for uh, observational studies where we do not have the luxury of experimentation okay one more question veer singh chauhan from facebook again what if there are more treatments uh there is a, a short answer is yes you can do it uh, but the long answer is there is something called as multi value treatment effect models so you can explore multi value treatment effect models which are uh, available in stata as well and you can simply google it that multi value treatment effect models so there is a plenty of literature you can use it so even when you are there are more than one categories you can still use it one more question from pooja mehra again from facebook she is asking what is logic behind using log in expenditure you have used 
while log yeah 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 so the problem with using the original variable was that there were too many outliers and the distribution was totally skewed so whenever there is a skewed variable when you use the variable as such so it will have a higher effect so it, it can cause biased results so instead of that uh, if you take the logarithm it it closely follows a normal distribution and it is better to use logarithm whenever you have a skewed distribution and most of the variables when uh, for example like income the chances of having a skewed distribution is very normal so that is the reason why i have used logarithm uh, okay so I, i have like written down few questions which were like raised uh, in the q and a session in the zoom uh, mm -hmm. let me like generalize it one specific question was that what should be the sample size for impact assessment Uh, this is a very difficult question for me to answer uh, there is no specific guidelines on what is the sample uh, size uh, but uh, one thing that everybody knows i'm not saying anything new like the larger the sample it is better uh, but when you have smaller samples don't be over ambitious and directly jump into methodologies like propensity score matching which requires higher sample so whenever you have a smaller sample size pick the methods which are robust even in the smaller sample size there is a fine line there is a trade off between uh, the method and the sample size we have methods like regression adjustment methods heckman selection models so those models are better if you have smaller samples and if you have larger samples then you can use propensity score matching if you have panel data then you can use did so it is very difficult for me uh, to say this is the right kind of sample it's very contextual one another question which was raised is that uh, like the issue of autocorrelation homoscedasticity would it be a problem in psm uh i don't think there are that big issues uh, in psm uh, because if you observe the method closely are we running any regression except for the probit and logit that we are doing for estimation of propensity score no once the propensity score is calculated then we are directly moving into matching which is a non parametric uh, method once the matching is done it is simple hypothesis testing so there is not much an issue of either heteroscedasticity or or uh, another uh, econometric issues are not there that is why we call propensity score matching as Uh, semi parametric method uh one question which was like raised which you might be discussing next tomorrow is what if we assess subhash alone before and after coaching yeah i would prefer to answer that tomorrow i will drag subhash tomorrow also and i will discuss it okay i i think it's already more than 2 hours i've been speaking <laughs> yeah Dr. Aditya, thank you very much, Dr. Aditya, for such wonderful lecture. Very clear and simple explanation for impact assessment principles. Also, topic of PSM very well covered with practical sessions and giving more information about Stata. We are getting very good feedback from both Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Many people, including Professor Despande from IJEC Bangalore, have greatly appreciated your teaching ability. We are really, you, really grateful to you for today's session. Thank you very much. Uh, i also thank dr subhash sp for answering most of the questions and giving very strong backup to you and dear participants tomorrow again we'll learn we'll be learning with dr aditya one more important methodology for impact assessment and that is difference in difference till then goodbye from me and my co-host dr abhimanyu thank you all thank you thank you